praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We are a blessed people. A warm and sincere greeting to all our precious viewers. Welcome to your favorite program, Choices. You know, we are not only concerned about your spiritual growth and development, but also the total man. We want to take a look at the carnage on our roads, on our roads. How many innocent lives have been lost? We are less than one million in population, and we cannot afford to continue at the rate we are going. We appeal to all road users to let good sense prevail. In order for us to put an end to this madness, let us exercise the five C's. One, care. Two, caution. Three, consideration. Four, common sense. And five, courtesy when using the roadways. We want to minimize, if not eradicate, the loss of human lives. In this manner, to our professional ranks, please continue to do your work in a professional manner. Let us treat others as we would want to be treated. We care about you. Plenty love from choices. God bless you, and God continue to bless. Beautiful Guyana. Again, welcome and thanks. You know, I think it was in, in, in Bible school I heard, I can't remember exactly who was the teacher then, the professor then, but I heard heaven is the first law of order. I heard that statement. And God has created us as social beings. And while he has created us as social beings, that is done or was done in a context. And if we could recall, at one time, God gave Moses what, we, what was referred to as the Ten Commandments. And those commandments, the intention was to bring order in our lives, how we are to live and how we are to conduct ourselves. Thou shalt not steal, kill, covet. And so Ten Commandments were, were clearly laid out as to how the people should live at that time, which is still applicable now. And so what has happened now is that men would have borrowed these ideas from the Bible because everything originates from the Bible. Nobody created anything. I mean, some people like to think that they created something in themselves, but everything was patterned off of the, the word of God. So society now has what? Rules, laws, mores, and um, norms, and all of these things are so structured. In social studies, they taught us that rules, norms, mores, customs, practices, but all of these things, if you look at it, they are hinged upon those commandments and what God has really said. And so the reason for that is to bring order in society. So a violation of those things could throw society into chaos. For example, um, Bishop, you talked about um, it's, it's Windsor Road. When you person should be going one lane going down, People, you have a double lane, and so you find vehicles kissing and confusion. Now I've noted that two policemen um, on their traffic bikes, they're sitting like that, watching them. So some of the people who come around the bend, they run straight into the policemen, and the policemen just say, come, come, come. And so policemen are gatekeepers in, 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 in a certain kind. They keep the gate. They keep the gate for, for order and, and those who want to break laws and, and so on. I think the other day we saw, I saw a video was posted. One man choked another one. And look how these guys coordinated. They choked him, blocked him out, as you would say, went into his pockets. And so it was so nice to see that the next day, I think it was that the police had these men. Um, they captured them. And that is a plus. So they are gatekeepers. And so they are part of the whole process of, of, of order. So I think we have to, as families, seriously consider teaching these rules, these laws, how to use the road, you, you know, how, how we should use pedestrian cross and the kind of um, Reverend Singh made mention of the five C's and how we should be courteous and not 
being abusive and, and running over people, running into people and so on. We just have to reflect that God really created us as social beings, yes, but we have to live in a context. And that is why we have rules, laws, norms, mores, or, or customs that we should follow. And if we do these things, we could very well save lives and get some order in, in our society. Gentlemen. Dr. Hudson, I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to so eloquently establish that God made us social beings. We must live among each other. No, it is God who said that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone, that he needed others. And many times we, because of many reasons, we sometimes believe that we can live alone. But that is not quite possible. Even God knew that. We need each other. I need you. You need me. We all need each other. We make a wonderful company. Some cases you say for your children and your wife and your, your spouse, you say we make a wonderful family. I believe that the five C's that were established for driving goes way beyond driving. Not just driving, but it helps as a guideline. So our day-to-day -day interaction with each other. Care, for example, is, is necessary, not just personal care, but care for each other. So it becomes absolutely necessary that we look out for and have a compassion for. I get the impression that we, we don't value life. Sometimes as you see what happens, for example, on the road, we, we, once we live, that's it. To, 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 to God be what happens to anybody else. So a sense of care, it's a sense of caution, and um, that becomes so critical not to be reckless. Um, the need for caution as we interact with each other. Because just while you might be in a big truck, for example, and no offense against truck drivers, just the image, you might be in a, uh, in a big truck, and the, an accident, the, the, the physical uh, injury, might be minimal for you, the consciousness that there is someone in a small car or on a cycle um, must make an impact and impression upon my mind. So I must be cautious how I operate. Oh, oh what about consideration? Oh man, and what about common sense? Sometimes we don't see, I guess they say common sense is not common, right? <laughs> we don't see the exercise to bear common sense. And so, and the, the, the subject of courtesy and oh man, from a very early age at home, that those values are instilled. Right? That's the point I want to establish. From at home, early in our lives, we should learn these things because we will constantly interact with each other. And Dr. Hudson, you know, I'm so happy you spoke about order as well. You know, um, on as as sticking to the roadways. As we as we use the roadways, I remember as a, as a youngster growing up, you know, I'm not that old, but I remember the police used to prosecute you for lights on your bicycle. You must have a light back and front. You know, you must have had a light on your bicycle when you're riding in the evenings. You know, that was not so long ago. So we need to go back to those days. Now um, we have reflective vests as well. And they have so much more paraphernalia that is being sold for a cyclist who ride in the evenings. You know, they have these flashing lights and there's so much more that that the, um, the developed world has that we can we can take some and adapt to our our society. We have a very dark country. We know that um, we're working on that. But in the meantime, to save lives, Reverend, Reverend Asana mentioned value, I think I want to mention, talk about that a little bit. We need to value each other. We need to value ourselves first, though, before we can value value anyone else. Once we can value ourselves. It's, we will find it much easier to value others, you know, as, as it relates to order as well, as we use the roadways and, and as we do rehabilitation, yes, we remove the traffic lights to rehabilitate the roadways, but we don't have to do that alone. There are temporary traffic lights out there that we can install. As the road is being done, it may take years, two, three, maybe even five years. So we'll, with the roadway, we'll be without a traffic light for five years. No, we, that's not valuing each other. That is not valuing yourself. That is not valuing lives. And as Reverend Singh started the program with, we do not have even a million people in our nation. So we need to start valuing and we need to start understanding the process of valuing each other 
But we first need to value ourselves, I must say. We're, there are temporary topic lights that out there that we can put into the contract that the contractor must use. And we have life, we have life spare, we have spare lives as we continue our rehabilitation work and all of our infrastructure work. There are temporary measures that we can use to value you and to value me. Let's value each other more. I endorse what my colleague just said about a dark country. He, he was referring to the state of electrification in terms of it, nothing else. He's referring to the state of electrification um, in, in the back alleys, in the streets, in the, on the dams. That's what he was referring to. And um, we are hoping uh, last night, myself and wife we were driving, and and um, she said, "You notice people don't use um, cycles a lot these days." And I said, "Well, it depends on your perspective." As we speak, there are three cyclists on this road that I'm driving on. They have no lights, <laughs> you know. But it is my duty as a driver to know where they are, you know. They have no lights. And, and she was where? And I showed her they, they one, two, three as I passed them. And um, so they're all over. They're not only uh, they're not only there riding their bikes without lights in the darkness, they're coming against you in a one-way street, against you in the middle of the road. Like if you better get out of the way, I have the right of way. And um, that's the kind of mindset that we have. But it speaks, that speaks to the whole question of order. We have to go return to that place where order is respected. And you can have 10 C's. If the human being does not have that personal order, we will have to course, we will have to have a greater presence of the coercive um, of the state. They'll have to be in every corner. They'll have to be in every highway. It'll have to be in every river in order for some of us to do what we should be doing. And so we are pleading with you not to only do right when the law is present, but to do it instinctively. And choices would like to commend the Ghana police force. For I, I mean, the image of those two guys all day strategize to rob that man. According to one major report, they got $700 and the man's cell phone, something like that. Look, look, look at the effort. The magistrate, I hope, will consider them for special treatment. They, that, that man, one of them locked that, that businessman off and put him in a sleeper. This is no show. This is shocking. And the man passed out on the road there on the pay for whatever it was. But the most brilliant part of it is the fact that they were apprehended. And we want to say hats off. Um, the, the, the police, they get they get brick butts, they get whatever, but we want to give Jack his jacket. And we want to give instead of brick butts to the Ghana police force, um, that one, that one, event, we want to give you a bouquet of flowers. And I had a, a, a school friend um, who used to spell bouquet in a special way. We want to give you a bouquet of, of, of flowers. Hats off to you guys. Great work. You know, while we talk about that, you know, on, a, on the other side of things, I look at the teamwork of these two men. I mean, just forgive me for just mentioning this. These guys coordinated. It means that we have the potential to think, we have the potential to strategize, but we need to direct it into the right path, you know? And there is where the family comes in again. You know, we gotta continue to, to play our role, daddy, Mommy, you have to continue to play a role in pointing your children to the, in the right way. Train up a child in the way he should go. 
and model these values because we have the ability, we have the wherewithal to, to, to work together, to develop, to accomplish goals, you know, let us, why not just switch that and see how we'll be able to flow as a people. You know, Bishop, you made something that went so, so quietly, you, I, but it hit me so deeply. You just said that if we establish order, I'm putting it in my words, if we establish order from the, from the grassroots level, it in essence is going to even save us capital expenses in, 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 um, in, in, in areas like the police force because you will have to put more men out to maintain order and to bring order. I, it, it, it brought to my attention the importance of from the executive level right down to the ordinary level, how we all will benefit by just establishing order. And uh, I pray that that training and that environment will be cultivated from this moment, amen. Reverend San, if I, if I hear you, I think you're suggesting that, that, that order um, contributes to development in, in every fashion and in every form. Because I'm thinking um, what you've just said, look at like the cost of a vehicle, for example, one vehicle. Let us not go to lies as yet, but the cost of a vehicle, um, the cost of damage to tra traffic lights and to bridges and so on that you know, eventually those things got to be restored. And, uh, and then let us go to lies now, people who, who could contribute to the development of society. And uh, many of those persons have died. And some of them, they, they, they had great potential to become great people. And some of them were already great people who, um, who really they were making a contribution. But because of this disorder, we saw the waste of not only human resource, but we saw the, the, the waste of physical resources and, and even capital, because you have to now reconstruct, rebuild, um, you have to buy again and so on. And so I think if you could, if, if we really take seriously how we should conduct ourselves orderly, our society could be more advanced. And um, I, I don't know, Bishop, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's $7 they got because I mean, we, it's $7 now, I think it's, it's, it's kind. We don't have those bills anymore. So did they go in the man pocket and take out the, 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 seven, <laughs> the seven coins? But look look how they could have made money by just doing some work. Um, you know, even if it is what we might be considered menial, like reading. You know, there's a man by just by this old church there. Um, this guy... I take pleasure in giving him the hundred dollars or sometimes fifty dollars, twenty dollars to fetch the bottle of water from you because it's a lot of weight. This guy stands by Ardina Street there, and when you go to buy water, he stands there and he takes twenty, forty dollars to fetch the bottle of water after pulling it to to the um to the vehicle. You know, at the end of the day. I am sure that man makes maybe a couple of thousand of dollars because he is determined to work. And uh, these men need not operate like that because if you were determined to work, and, and work is hard, you know, if you were determined to work, you could make far more money than actually sitting down at the back of a police vehicle with handcuffs on your hand, heading up to, to only God knows where and what, what will become of you. And so uh, we need to, to concentrate on being orderly. One of the things, one of the things we have to do, and this one could be a little challenging, is to really remove the celebration of criminality. In a certain section in our in our society, uh, criminal enterprise is really celebrated, and those guys who got caught on the video, um, people would back back in the whole back in where they are from, they're celebrated by your like how you, how you make some, put on the sleeper and, and those kinds. There's nothing to, to celebrate there, but this is the mindset of a generation, not only in this country, but in the world. And we have to find a way 
to be able to show them, like you pointed out there, Dr. Watson, that we can become more involved in productive efforts and uh, legitimate productive efforts. So we can move from one stage to never to be a blessing. And we have to help our, our folk understand that there is a better way. Um, we just have a couple more minutes and I'd like to introduce an idea. Uh, we really want to encourage us to, to um, pay keen attention, those of us who use the road, um, to the five Cs. And by the same token, we really wanted to give a shout out and recognition to the uh, Guyana Police Force for excellent work in this instance that we identify. But as we go forward into um, the 21st century, uh, there's some research that is emerging that would suggest, and um, we are just biting it off now, but we want to let you know that we all know that we live on the coastland that is below sea level. And uh, the, 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 the world is connected. It's, it's amazing. Don't believe that Guyana stands by itself. Um, the world is connected. I was inquiring about certain goods and services that I use. And I understand that the reason why those things are not here, they're not in the, in the business places. They're not in the supermarkets. All because they haven't been able to resolve that bottleneck they have in New York with huge container ships waiting to be given an opportunity to birth and to offload their containers. It's amazing how the entire world is now interconnected. People buying produce from China, from Japan, from Taiwan, from Australia, from New Zealand, from Fiji, and it's crisscrossing like this from India uh, and all over, from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Kenya, it's all over. And um, because of the interconnectivity of our world. We are now aware, you buy, you, you look at a tin of butter made in New Zealand, made in Australia. You look at uh, a packet of chocolate, Toblerone, I think that's the name of the, of, of, of the chocolate, made in Switzerland, and, and so on and so forth. When you look at our, our, um, our chocolate, chocolate tea made in Guyana, and we, we, we have that. And um, I am amazed to look. I saw my wife using something called mint, mint leaf. It's, it was made in the Escribo and packaged, and it's gone around the world. So this is a powerful thing. This interconnectivity of our world tells us that a huge ice, piece of ice, iceberg, will break from where it is currently lodged in Antarctica. And it will, it's, it's, a, it's the size of Florida. And when that, because of global warming, or global warming, that will now go into the oceans and it will cause the level of the ocean to rise by one meter. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that they are postulated could have catastrophic effects on countries like Guyana. Now, Joshua would be able to tell us quickly what a meter translates to in terms of feet and inches. The thing about that is that Georgetown will be put under enormous pressure. As we know Georgetown, the water will rise. So we could have, we could have flooding. So as you plan to build your dream house, as you plan to invest in your business, we're going to be discussing more of this. I'm just giving you an introduction. They are realities that we need to think about. Gentlemen, 
Should we panic or should we plan? I, I, I think, Bishop, um, we should plan. Um, we should plan way ahead. I remember in 1992 at the Rio summit that was held in Brazil, um, the issue about climate change and its implication and its impact for particularly low-lying states, um, those issues were ventilated and they were a consideration that going forward in terms of economic and social development, um, plans should be put in place where there'll be um, coexistence between um, human um, life and development and that of the environment. And so your mention of the fact that this iceberg will break off, I think in another five years or so as it's predicted, um, it, it's cause for us to accelerate or increase our ability to plan because science has shown that it will happen. I mean, look at what happened to us early um, last year. We had unprecedented amount of rainfall and even some of the areas um, outside of the capital city um, were affected. So it's not just the ocean level that will rise, but because of climate change, we have unprecedented amount of rainfall. And also we're accustomed to hearing May, June rain, um, December, January rain and all of that. But we are seeing that the cycle um, has been changing over the years. And so we need to plan how can we counter or how can we extricate ourselves from the likelihood of this thing happening? Bishop, one meter is three feet. 3.32 inches, 3 feet, 3.32 3 inches. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. And um, could you imagine having an increase of 3 feet in the ocean? This is not tsunami. This is just because of human behavior and how it is affecting the climate. Now I can hear some classical people say, I don't believe in our foolishness. We are going to have some more discussions on this. And, um, we have a duty. You know, there are people who say the world will end. Well, the whole question is, we better understand the signs of the time. And this is one of the signs that we need to take a serious note of. We will continue our dialogue. Thank you for being with us. This is Choices. As usual, be blessed. We wish you all well. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.